Today we are out here at the Range Research Station that's just west of Stillwater's main campus. And we are out here in a prescribed burn area and talking with Dr. Laura Goodman. Dr. Goodman, thank you for having us again. We always enjoy coming out and hearing about your research. So tell us a little bit about this pasture in particular um, and when it was recently burned. So this area in our pasture was burned this August, so just um, about a month ago. Um, we do burn in other portions of this pasture as well. We do what's called patch burn grazing. And so instead of burning the entire pasture, we just burn portions of the pasture, but animals have access to the whole pasture to graze. Okay. And so this is really beneficial to wildlife species. It increases plant species diversity and also kind of the structural differences. Right, some are woodier and some are newer growth, imagine. Exactly, okay. yep. And it's really excellent for livestock too because it provides them with really high quality forage. Okay, so generally when we talk about livestock grazing, we're talking often about cattle grazing. Yeah but y'all are trying something new out here. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about those goats in the back yeah. yeah, so we have been doing patch burn grazing research here um, at OSU since 1999. Um, and that was all done with livestock that were just cattle. We didn't have any, any other species mixed in. But more recently, we decided to add goats um, to some of our cattle pastures. And one of the reasons that we did that was because we have so many re-sprouting woody species um, in Oklahoma. One of the things that is um, happening kind of across the Great Plains, but even to a greater extent here in Oklahoma and Texas, is that woody plants are starting to take over and, and create woodlands where there used to be prairies. And so one way to help suppress that is using prescribed fire. And it's really, really effective for some of our non-resprouting species like eastern red cedar. But um, many of our woody species will grow back after fire. They aren't, they aren't permanently um, killed by it. And so when we pair that with goats, we can get a greater lo level of control. So can you tell us a few of those different woody species that the goats in particular are finding? Yeah. Taking care of? <laughs> so um, we are looking at some of some woody species in specifically in this pasture. And so some of those would be blackberry, uh, sumac. We have a couple of species of sumac that we're, we're tracking. And then uh, Cerecia lespedeza. And so Cerecia lespedeza, of course, is a non-native plant. It's extremely invasive. Um, across many states, but especially here in central and eastern Oklahoma. And uh, goats can handle the tannins that that plant cr um, creates that some other livestock species can't. Okay, so they actually don't really notice the bad flavor. And tell us a little yeah. bit, of why is it those species have bad flavor over some of our grasses and things like that? Yeah, it's interesting. So our grasses, they handle grazing by just regrowing lots and lots of new blades and tillers. Um, but our broadleaf plants, they don't do that. They, um, they chemically defend themselves, so they have different um, compounds in them that make them unpalatable to many um, livestock species. But goats have different proteins in their saliva. They have um, differences in their liver and their kidneys where they can handle greater quantities, especially of tannins, which is what's in Cerecia. Um, and so they can handle those plants, and they don't, they don't they don't, it doesn't limit their consumption of those plants as much. So tell us a little bit about mixing that with the burning. Obviously it makes it a softer tissue for them and more yeah. palatable, um, but are you able to control their kind of grazing habit or would they still go graze the woody stuff as well? Yeah, so that's interesting. We're, we're tracking where they're grazing. We have GPS collars on goats and we have GPS collars on cattle in this pasture as well. We know that the, the cattle are very attracted to recently burned um, patches, but there's no current data or no, no data at all on what goats do in response to this patch burn grazing. And so one of the benefits of the fire is that we're starting those plants over from scratch. They're re-sprouting from the base. Goats can reach all of the new growth um, and they use it heavily. But we don't know if they are as tra attracted to the burn as the cattle are. So we're, we're tracking that to see what happens. So far what we're seeing is that they're attracted to the most recent burn and um, the burn that was done previous. So there's, there's a burn every six months in these pastures. Okay. And so they're not 
as focally attracted to the most recent burn, but they're they're working on the burns for okay. sure. Excellent. Yep. So you talk about the reach of the goats. Uh, <laughs> you know, a lot of times you'll see goats that are <laughs> sort of look like they're climbing trees almost, but not quite. Um, but there's also the reach as far as into a bushy, overgrown area. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that and how fire plays into that as well. So um, one thing that happens is you can get these mots or really thick clumps of, of shrubs. And so we get those with sumac, we get those with blackberry for sure. And in the middle of those mots, even when we're using prescribed fire, the fire can't get in there because there's not enough fine fuel, there's not enough grass to carry the fire in there. And so you'll get these other species that grow up in the middle um, that we don't necessarily want in the pasture. And when you use goats plus fire, what we're hoping will happen is as the goats use the outside that's been burned of that mott and keeps those, those plants suppressed, that then we get a lot of grass growing in there and we can bring the fire further into those areas. Okay, well, and tell us a little bit, I know you got your goat pro, you put on yes. the horns of one of your goats and tell us a little bit about what you've seen on that goat pro. Yeah, so we've put, our, we've put goat pros on a couple of times to track what the goats are eating. And um, one of the things that we did on our first goat pro is just identify all the different species. And so they were eating quite a bit of ragweed. Um, they were eating a lot of wood sorrel, which is this little, um, little tiny legume plant that grows all over in the understory. And then the other plant that we were really excited to see them eat was Cerecia lespediza. And actually in two goat pros we've tracked, um, they have been eating Cerecia lespediza to a, a pretty high extent. And so we're excited by that. We're looking at the vegetation and we're measuring what's happening um, with our, within our pastures. Um, and we're hopeful that this will be a way to help um, control this plant and allow us to do that without using any herbicide. And this is part of a grant. How long is this research going to continue? And... Yeah, so we, um, this is a part of a five-year grant and we're in uh, year two of the research. So um, we've got a couple more years to go, but we definitely plan to continue with our goat research, um, you know, into the future. Um, these goats have been really impressing us as far as, um, you know, the economics of, of including goats into an existing cattle herd. And so um, we're excited to continue watching how this works. Dr. Goodman, thank you so much for sharing your research. And it's really interesting to find out this value added product that you're getting to control your invasive species out here. Yeah, thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.